thank you. And shout out to those on YouTube streaming live. Hey, it is the week of love. Some of us are excited, some of us maybe not. <laughs> we will definitely see who, but let's get right into it. We got the hottest tea here on these sides of Africa. I am Naomi Wimboy, W-A-M-B-O-E on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And you said it absolutely beautifully. I appreciate all the weeks coming, but of course, who doesn't like a little week dedicated to love? My name is Dana DeGrazia. It is Hustle Goddess Online. Welcome to the show. As much as I am a lover of love, your sister is single, so this <laughs> Valentine's, I won't be doing much except for being here and enjoying because guess what, guys, we are here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6 p.m. So Valentine's Day, if you don't have a date, guess what, you can be here with us at 6 p.m. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Lydia KM, and that's Lydia KM on all social media handles. Yes. Woo! It is an exciting Day, obviously, time. as I said, I'm single, um, <laughs> and I feel like if you're single, it's not the time to just be mean and just be <laughs> you don't have to be better yeah. no it's the time to just sit back and let everybody else i would always kind of feel like that being single on valentine's day is probably one of the most fun times to be single except for like new year's because you know how it's like what new year's yeah. is it's like you're supposed to get a new year's kiss and so you know it's like if you're out and you're partying all night and you're like you run into someone and you're like Let's just have a kiss. You know, you're single, I'm single. And then Valentine's Day, there's also so many parties meant for single people. I, yeah, I, I think I've never fun. heard of that. There are so many anti-Valentine's parties. Yeah. 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 And you know, I don't like that. I feel like there should just be the Valentine's people do their thing. Yeah. And then we can just have a singles party. It doesn't have to be an anti-Valentine's because whether I'm single or not, I'm still very much a Valentine's <laughs> babe. Exactly. Right? But anyway, um, do you celebrate Valentine's? Are you feeling it? Are you excited? Let us know. Um, throughout the show, don't forget to stay on the hashtag Let's talk. The SMS line is 40920, and we have our WhatsApp number. Please keep up with us throughout the show. But right now, sorry, it's time for hot talk. <laughs> Um, I believe everybody knows I am a stan for Julie Geshuru for so many reasons. And um, for those who do not know who Julie Geshuru is, she is one of the biggest media personalities that we have. Um, she's a generation above us. Um, and during this, um, for this Valentine's, she had a message to us young ones, I guess would say, um, because she felt like there's definitely some imbalance on the expectations we have of each other during Valentine's. So she said, um, to, um, there should be some snippets. Yes. Um, so it says, there is no, um, to my sons, sorry, there is no need to feel pressure to deliver what is beyond your means or even simply, imp simply imprudent or impractical. One rose and your time is more than enough and any woman worth her salt would get it. If you feel pressure to live beyond your means, maybe you need to look for the woman who will be your friend, partner and equal. Give love, respect and attention every day. That is a true gift. Mm -hmm. I was like, woo! clapping but yeah. she had something for us sisters too so she said <laughs> to my daughters there is nothing more empowering than deciding to break the mold and take control give him a rose give him a gift take the driver's seat and spoil him if you can a woman must know that she needs nothing from any external factors other than god she must know that she can handle her business um she therefore needs no man but is able to choose her partner her homie lover and friend that is powerful be that woman be different do it your way no pressure yes mm, yeah i mean i thought the message was nice mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. because it's the 2020 this mm -hmm. day and age yeah. roles have changed time has changed yeah. we, we don't need to be stuck in the old ways mm -hmm. where it's the man who always has to do something for the woman yeah. and that's mm -hmm. it like mm -hmm. no go ahead spoil your man do what you can and of course don't go above and beyond what you can't afford right. there's no point in going broke on this one day of the year right. that is valentine's day when you guys should be celebrating the love you have for each other every day and yeah yes. absolutely i mean because also we would give the same advice to anyone who's like don't go broke for your wedding because mm -hmm. you have a whole marriage ahead of you you don't go yeah. broke on this day because you have a whole 364 other days that she's also going to want to be treated white. Right. Like you want to, this day necessarily, maybe you don't want to like follow a certain standard and you do want to do something nice because yeah. if you want to acknowledge the day. But here's a crazy idea. What if gift giving just like stopped being gendered? Mm -hmm. Like what if we just identify gift giving? It's like you're someone who I appreciate to have in my life. Yeah. I'm going to give you a gift. Mm -hmm. The same way we think it's super cute when guys will give like their moms flowers and their mm -hmm. you know their sisters and things like that. Yeah. You know it's like why does why is it that gift giving still is so gendered especially when it comes to this day? It doesn't 
doesn't have to be. Um, for me personally, the way I like to run um, um, Valentine's when I'm in a relationship is like the, all these other, like all these extras. I yeah. feel like that's the guy who does that, like yeah. the flowers and the dinner or whatever it is that he does. But I feel like there's also the part for the woman. Yeah. I don't feel like it's the day when you just kind of tie your hands and sit back and he's like, he's going to do everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like, especially when a man goes out for me, mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to match that yes. energy however <laughs> i feel fit right yeah. mm -hmm. it could be anything but you know just make somebody feel like you know thank you so much for the day that you know you spend the day making me feel beautiful surprising me roses whatever mm -hmm. and um and then this is where i come in i don't think it needs to be gendered whatsoever but it's just like all these other like flowers and in any those ones i definitely mm -hmm. See it like it's the guy yeah. who comes to me. Um, now with um, Judy Vishu, she was just like, you know, you can break the mold 100% as a woman, but mm -hmm. whatever advice you get from anyone, including Judy Gishuru, remember the dynamics of your relationship. Yeah. You yeah. guys know what's up, yeah. you guys know, you guys know who does what and how this runs in your own personal world. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's how it should be, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. And ladies, stop saying that Valentine's doesn't matter when it does, yeah. and then you're you're huffing Man. and puffing <sighs> every day after Valentine's. Why? It no, just be open. It should be a test. It's, no, this this should not be a day of no. testing, okay? Because the worst, the absolute worst way that I can think of spending any like big event in a relationship yeah. is you got what you were looking for, which was in that way a fight because you kind of you set someone up for failure when I you do know. that thing. You be set open. someone up to be well. You should know me well enough. It's like listen, you can't read his mind. He can't read yours. Yeah. If like it's sort of like me. Like I'm the kind of person who doesn't necessarily love going out for dinner, mm -hmm. especially because I know I'm a beast in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So what are we? doing this Valentine's Day mm -hmm. we bought an Instapot which I'm so freaking excited <laughs> to have and I get to cook the first really amazing dinner in it yes, and so dinner. that's special to me yeah. instead of going out and eating somebody else's food you gotta yeah. know it's that's true. awesome mm -hmm. like yeah that's so true switch up the roles do what you can you know yes. and get on the hashtag ebrew let's talk and the sms 40920 what are you doing this Valentine's <laughs> Day for your significant other we want to know the WhatsApp mm -hmm. number would be popping up on the screen yes <laughs> speaking of women because there are some who love being spoiled and love the finer things in life. Hamisa Mabeto. <laughs> Hamisa Mabeto, who is someone who we know loves the finer things in life. You know, arguably some people would say diamond included. Mm -hmm. But she obviously, as we know, is a Tanzanian socialite who was recently called out because she was carrying a bag that instead of saying Dior says Doer, I, I guess is the easiest <laughs> way of saying it, yeah. is doer. And this is recently after she was linked to hanging out with her ex and current man of somebody else who will remain nameless. But people are calling her out and being like, is your entire lifestyle fake? Is the world a joke? Have we gone into, I don't know, the nether regions kind of thing? Because it's mm -hmm. very clear that the bag does have a typo on it. My thing is, is... I mean, designers can do wild stuff with their designs. Maybe it is Why you real. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know. Right. I think she's so cute and pretty, and okay. I don't want it to she's be cute fake. And pretty yeah, with she the is fake cute. Bag. <laughs> yeah, right. fake. And that's fine. But you know what? This was wrong on whoever dressed her as part. Maybe it was herself. Maybe it she brought her back. But yeah. even the person like taking the pictures or editing the pictures could have been like, yo, did you know that your bag, the name is spelled wrong? Or maybe they just mm -hmm. didn't know because they don't know. But what if this was designer. a setup, you guys? What if, what if the person who dressed her or the photographer photoshopped it or something like that? And what if Hamisa is literally being thrown under the bus? Conspiracy yeah. theory. Mm, no. 20, 20, anything, 20. I would think like she would do it for clout, which nobody would want that no. name of doing yeah. that kind of thing for clout. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was um, just wrong on their part. I feel Personally, I feel like I will consistently always stay over here where I can afford until I can afford the real thing. I've always said I think there's so many cute yeah. clothes and so many ways to look fabulous without kind of without having a fake. I really don't understand why you need to wear a fake. Yeah. Um, first of all, Toy Market, shout out, you can get nice clothes there for cheap and still look fabulous. Mm -hmm. I am so always against um, fake bags. I really, really am. I just think it looks like, why? Like, you know, it's mm -hmm. not real. What if? And then, as, especially if you're trying to um, put out the idea that your life, yeah. that your yeah. standard of life is somewhere there, then of course you're going to get dragged. Yeah. I yeah. think these things are just things, but even if it's a thing, just 
where the root being would I, I would agree with you, especially for the kind of lifestyle that we know her to have. Right. I'm going to be honest. I will wear something fake, ironically. Like, if it's very clearly fake, to me, that's very funny. Mm -hmm. Like, even my favorite yeah. YouTuber had a whole series where she, like, went and bought a bunch of fake things that were, like, still cute. Mm -hmm. And I'll wear them knowing that they're fake because it's like, I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not a big designer person. Mm -hmm. But when you have built your brand and, yeah. and how people see you as authentically wealthy, this is a huge L. And I mean, she still hasn't yeah. said anything about it. I honestly feel like, what if it is a conspiracy though? That's what I'm going with. I don't think it's a conspiracy. <laughs> I think like, she's just gonna have to take this L really strongly who, because- Who would dress her in a fake I, thing? Exactly. I, I don't know, no, who wouldn't even? Yeah, now. something is going on because even, they, they took time to edit those pictures. She looked at the picture before she posted it. And she's it. gorgeous like, in it. That's just wrong on her. Or maybe she doesn't care. Maybe she doesn't care. They like, that, she's know? looking yeah. so she's looking so cute, body type, makeup great, hair awesome. Yeah. Doer. I'm, just, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so funny. Anyways, get on the hashtag Ebru Let's Talk or the SMS four zero nine two zero or in the WhatsApp. Let us know on Hamisa's part. Was this was this a publicity stunt? What do you what do you think? What mm -hmm. do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, so Jambi Koi Kai. Koi Kai, I said it right. Yeah, she is yeah. a recovering media personality. Um she had um done a show in, in Mombasa. 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 She had done a show in Mombasa. But she was left stranded with no money by the the guy who, what are they called? These guys who put the things together. Oh, the event planner. The promoter. The, the promoter, event yes. The event planners. And we've heard stories of this, like this so many times before. Like, this is just becoming annoying. So, like, why? Why are we doing this? Um, it says there, um, there was a day. We went to Mombasa for a show. Um, the promoter fled with our money in the morning and switched off his phone. We wanted to swim all the way to Nairobi. That's just, that's pathetic and it's sad. Like, it's 2020. Give people their money. Stop flying people out just to leave them stranded. Yeah. Come on, promoters. Do better. Yeah, but do you know what? Like, I am a firm believer that I'm not going anywhere I can't get myself out of. Yeah. Like, even True. if it's a scenario, like, we all drive, we do a road trip, or maybe one of our friends is the one who's paying for flight or whatever else. I always make sure, even if I'm just going to be like, hey, mom, let me handle this mm. just in case. Yeah. I never ever want to feel like the situation is like if I if this person does not do this thing I don't get to go home mm -hmm. even at the club yeah. if you drive with someone always make sure you have money to get cab home yep. because if they decide that they want to do something different or whatever yeah. just keep try on always have your like backup like we can discuss the not being paid in Nairobi when you're safe and sound but can you imagine being stranded yeah. and you're in your own country yeah no I can't deal with that so I think you should always get back up I agree I mean it's for me I'm the same way it's like it's a security issue you're never I'm never gonna run into someone I know in the street and be like hey I have no money unless I got wrapped down to my underwear yeah mm -hmm. like there's just gonna be no way where I'm gonna put myself into a position where I'm like oh just to on somebody else. Mm. There was even a time where I went to Nakuru and I went with somebody, my manager, mm -hmm. who like, I had a huge falling out with huge fight, we didn't even speak, and I knew 10 other people who could have gotten me home. Yeah. And if need me, I would have climbed onto him a tattoo if I needed yeah. to. You know, you should always have a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess I also just feel bad for her because we've talked about her health struggles before. Mm -hmm. Like she kind of is slowly coming back into the public's eye after a huge struggle with like serious health issues. Yeah. So I, I, I feel so bad, like who would take advantage of someone like that, you know? Yeah. Who, would, who would hurt somebody who's already been hurting in their life, mm -hmm. right? I mean, ask yourself that and hopefully you're going into the next, you know, couple months of 2020 with a, a new heart, you know? Yeah. Valentine's Day is next week. But we're going to go into our next segment. Speaking of love and affection for people and support, it's time for Ask the Girls. Ladies, ladies, we're on top. Hey. So this Ask the Girls is a, a very unique one. You're going to get a, a little taste of it, but remember to send in any feedback you have, whether it was about the stories or what we're about to talk about now, to the WhatsApp number that we should have on the screen, or you get onto our Instagram page and send in whatever you want to talk about. It's at Ibru TV Kenya is the general company, and we have at Ebru Let's Talk underscore official for your specific tea. So this person writes, hey gals, I really need... You really need help. My parents and brothers refer to me as a fool because I chose to do rap. It really hurts inside because I know one day my music will sell, but they don't support it in any way, saying that rap is 
BS. Um, I'm really hurt by this because I've been thinking of letting rap be and focus on something else. Please help me. So the question is, should this person give up their passion career for something that their family would consider to be more socially and professionally acceptable? Um, I want to start off by saying thank you for this question. It's amazing because <laughs> um, we usually talk about like relationship, relationship. advice. Yeah, this you is cheated unique. on me, this, that, but this is awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and I will say as a music person myself, as an artist myself, mm -hmm. I would say go for what you love doing but work very, very hard at it because, mm -hmm. and always have maybe some type of backup plan to go with it. Like just so you can show your parents you're doing something, you yeah. know? Like don't, don't say you're a rapper, but at the same time your raps are whack. You're not doing any research. You're not going out and actively trying to get work or performances mm -hmm. or talking to other people who can better and further your career. No, you're not a rapper. Then you're just, you're, it's just for show. Mm -hmm. Don't do it for show. Do it for what you, if that's what you love and you absolutely love doing it, by all means, if you could give it 110%, I believe it could work out for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think to just give, um, to give you, um, your parent, your mom and your brother, like I guess some kind of to cut some slack. Yeah. It's um, Jay-Z said, I always quote Jay-Z because he's the greatest of all time. Um, mm -hmm. He said that one of his uncles, when he told his uncle that I'm going to sell a million, right? Like in his first album, his uncle was like, what? Like, of course you can't do that. Are you being mm -hmm. serious? Like, who do you think you are? I mean, you're a guy from the hood. You think you're going to just sell a million in your first? I mean, what? That was his uncle's response. And, of course, that made Jay-Z feel really bad. But yeah. he said afterwards, he was just like, people are only going to communicate their own limits. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Like, when, some, when you tell someone you can do something beyond their own belief, they're 100% going to shut it down. But they're not shutting it down because you can't do it. They have no evidence that you can do it or not. They are only communicating their limits, number one. Number two, when it comes to our family members, sometimes they will bully us into making decisions that are safer for us. That's mm -hmm. what they think they're doing. The, your mom and your brother might think that they are doing this so that they can protect you from being the another field rapper, another school dropout who thought they could make it in music and it didn't work out. That's mm -hmm. what they think they're protecting you from. You know what I mean? And I don't condone them calling you a fool. I don't think that's okay. But I want you to see it from a perspective of when you know that this is for you, a million other people are going to tell you that these are um, that you can't do it. So they are just giving you a practice run on what it's like outside here. And um, you're not the first, you won't be the last of having a row of people telling you that you can't do it. I personally don't think that other people saying that you can't do it is a reason to not do anything. In fact, sometimes I feel like it's a feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in, and furthermore to what these wonderful women have said, mm. um, a lot of people, not even a lot of people, what happens when you're on the journey is people will talk about it because I haven't seen you as successful mm -hmm. at the journey, okay? No one, no one gives, you know, Jay-Z or Lil Wayne, what, you know, their Ashton and their Grammys any crap right now, okay? Mm -hmm. No one talks about, you know, Adele, who she is now kind of thing. No one talks about these people because they consider them to have made it. Mm -hmm. So the thing is a lot of people will talk from their fe fears, as Lydia said, because they don't consider you someone who has made it and they want you to go into a career that they do consider safe. Yeah. Um, I've been struggling a lot right now and talking with um, my dad, who thankfully is really supportive because I'm even still figuring out my creative path. Mm -hmm. I'm figuring out how do I want to express myself creatively. And it's fantastic that you figured out rap is the way that you want to do it. And you know what you tell people when people People are like, oh, you know, you should get a more serious job because this whole thing, it's not going to pay the bills, things like that. Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, an icon in an incredibly amazing franchise, among others, incredibly amazing franchise, mm -hmm. was a carpenter before he became the great actor that he was. Yeah. Plenty of people had other more socially acceptable jobs before they became who they were. And that's fine. If you, if you feel like you need a trade also to pay for the career you want, mm -hmm. that could be a good way to go about things. But Nomi made a fantastic point in the sense of the people who succeed the most at what they want to succeed at devote everything they have to it. So unfortunately, what might be called upon you is you have to give 100% of yourself to a job that pays the bills and 100% of the, yourself to a job that feeds your creative soul, 100% of yourself that pays the rent kind of thing. Yeah. You know, people have to be split and all those little fractions have to be 100% energy. Mm -hmm. So you have to be prepared for that. 
but we wish you nothing but the best because all of us are working in the creative yeah. industry. Most yeah. definitely, and don't give up at the end of the day, just don't give up. But even at the end it says, I've been thinking of letting rap be and focusing on something else. Mm -hmm. If you can just let rap go like that, mm -hmm. that easily, mm -hmm. I would say you better find something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if it's not your, your like wholehearted passion and mm -hmm. you're gonna give it your 110%, then don't bother with it. Let it be a hobby. Let it be something fun that you do Expression. while you are getting your education or making your money to pay your bills mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. You know? I feel like the, the goal is always um, hold that vision. With the vision which you see yourself as a successful rapper, hold it. But the process of how that's going to happen, I promise you, you will not even recall it. And when, mm -hmm. when a child wants to do something creative, depending on the um, demographic, where you're coming from, your parents get a lot of slack. Yeah. Your parents get a lot of slack. I know when my sister wanted to be a dancer when she was younger, yeah. as much as we were raised abroad, they were like the Kenyan community was just like, wow, yeah. you're yeah. going to let your daughter do that? A mm -hmm. lot of them were like that. But guess what? Now that my sister is touring all over the world dancing, oop, crickets you know <laughs> so sometimes our parents and the people who love us are getting pressure from other people like mm -hmm. why are you not advising them da, 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 da. so they are yeah. only communicating the anxiety they're probably getting elsewhere yeah. exactly. i would just say stick with it because mm -hmm. eventually my sister stuck with dance so hard that my mom was just like okay this is clearly it this is yeah. what she wants to do mm -hmm. so if you stick with it and you do not give up people are gonna start thinking yo maybe you do have exactly. something going exactly yeah. you know Courage of conviction, yeah. like in in any environment, in any conversation, courage of conviction, not to the point where you're hostile, because a lot of people also tend to like challenge it because they want to get a rise out of you because yeah. that's then going to validate them. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, you see, you're so angry. You're not even focused. You know, you're just doing this because you want to Sijui, hurt your parents or something kind of thing. Yeah. So you can still be like, no, this is my passion. This is what I'm committed to. Mm -hmm. And whatever path you take to it, even if that means you have side hustles or it means you have to talk to other people, you have to do, you know, crap jobs or something. If this is the path that you've chosen, this is gonna. This has to be the path that you stick to. It's Definitely. true. Yeah. I think. I think we've given him some great advice at yeah. this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for your for your feedback and your questions. Remember, you can send them to our Instagram page. That's at Ebru Let's Talk underscore official. We do have a little tiny bit of feedback that we bit. will read right now. This one says, Hi ladies, Bev here. Y'all looking great. First time commenting and I always enjoy watching you guys. Thank you so much, Bev. We truly do appreciate you yeah. and all of your comments that you give us. We enjoy being watched. Yeah, mm -hmm. most definitely. Yeah. yeah, let me tell you this. Um, first things first, when it comes when it comes to like dreams and people wanting to do um, different things, I feel every single person has probably tried something that most people looked at them like, you're crazy. Yeah. So I feel like that's just the, the norm now. And you are born in an amazing generation because a lot of people are very successful creatively. Mm -hmm. yes. um, anyway, thank you so much for joining us, guys. We're going to take a short break. So go top up your tea, go get some popcorn, go relax, stretch your legs because we've not got not one, we've got two amazing guests after the break. See you soon. Ladies, ladies, we're on top. Hey. We're on top.